So let's go ahead and lay down might want to take a few deep breaths in and out. And then we'll begin our three-part breathing. Inhale, belly, ribs, and chest, and exhale as you reverse that. Okay, and then we add that ocean sound, the hissing sound at the back of the throat. That's ujjayi. It's like fogging a mirror, but with your mouth closed. Okay, so when you do that properly, the breath should slow down quite a bit. So don't be surprised if your breath becomes much longer. And when we really get going, you may not be able to maintain that really slow, deep breathing, but these techniques help get us our breath in the ballpark of where we want it, okay? Now let's begin by um, doing some stretches for the legs. We're trying to open up certain parts of the legs. So we're going to stretch the right leg. So let's bring our left leg up and drop it over. This is called a cattail. We take the bottom leg and scoot it back. Bend the knee, reach back and grab the foot. Now, if you can't grab with your hand, try a strap and you're just looking for a gentle stretch at the front of your thigh. Now you can move the foot around a little bit, pulling it in and letting go of it. Just try and feel the tension at the front of the thigh. This front leg could be straighter bent and it could be higher, meaning closer to your face or lower, meaning further from your face. So just try and feel any tension there at the front of the thigh. And then let's switch over to the other side. Before we do, take a moment, just feel both thighs. See if you can feel the difference between the two. You may not, may not seem significant. You may not understand what you're feeling. That's not important. Just see if you can register that indeed the stretching does create a... Um, perceivable change in the way that the thighs feel. Now let's do the other side. So right leg up, drop it over to the left. In yin, we call this cattail pose. Okay, so again, it doesn't have to be still. You can move it around a bit. Find where the tension lives. And then once you find it, you can repeat that stretch a few times. And then you can hold for a few breaths. Both are very effective for releasing tension.
Good. Let's unwind from there. Hmm. Feeling both thighs. And then we can hinge up to seated. So let's do a few of these just to activate the core. If there's any pain in your back, you're gonna bend your knees a bit, but otherwise the legs are straight. Take a nice deep breath. Lift the head and neck, exhale, lower the legs toward the ground. And just before they touch, inhale, extend them up and exhale back down again. Good, let's just do a few of those. Good, next time we lift them up, let's exhale about a third of the way down, take a breath. And then a third of the way down, take a breath. And then hovering just above the ground, take a breath. Good, inhale those legs up and exhale up to seated. Let's cross those ankles, come forward to a tabletop position. Let's do a few cat cows. Inhale, tailbone lifts, belly drops, crown of the head up. Exhale, tuck tailbone, round the back, crown of the head down. Do as many of those as you like, but when you feel you've warmed up in that direction, you might start adding some more variety, like hips side to side, moving your head and neck, moving your shoulders. When you're done on hands and knees with the torso, then tuck your toes, lift your hips, and focus on the legs. And to some extent, you might say the arms and shoulders, but usually it's more the legs. So pedaling back and forth, rolling over the toes, circling the ankles, bending the knees, even lifting and kicking the legs are things that you can try here. Take your time. Once you've stretched out and warmed up, come into your full expression of the downward dog. So hands are shoulder width, fingers spread wide, palms firmly planted on the ground, especially the pad under the pointer finger. The chest is actively drawing toward the toes. Feet about hip distance and heels are actively reaching toward the ground. You might be able to see my heels are on the ground. Not everyone can do that. And that doesn't necessarily mean if you keep stretching, one day you will. So you just reach your heels down as far as they'll go. Okay. All right, with the exhale, let's walk our feet toward our hands. We come into a rag doll. You can grab the opposite elbow. You might nod or shake your head, sway your hips. You can bend the knees a bit. Notice what you feel along the back of your body. So that includes your legs and your low back and the back of your neck and shoulders. 
So I've had been having a little bit of sciatic pain in my left leg, and I can feel that here. So again, it's just information. Um, I doubt it will affect my practice much, but it's just interesting to note because that is something I've been dealing with lately. Okay, arms relaxed. We inhale and gradually roll up to standing. Ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and heels all align. And we'll do a few modified sun salutations. So feet touching if possible, otherwise hip distance. We inhale, arms up, touch palms, lift the heart, and exhale to a forward fold. Inhaling to the half lift, and we exhale as we step to the top of a push-up, placing the wrists directly below the shoulders. Shoulders are active and ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and heels are in one straight line. One common thing I see when people do this posture, it looks like this, so that's not really plank. Okay, plank is a straight plank of wood, so that's what we want to create with our body here, straight, okay? All right, let's take a deep breath. We're gonna drop those knees for this first push-up. Exhale halfway down. Take a breath, and with the next exhale, come the rest of the way down. As you inhale, lift your head, neck, chest, belly, but keep your hips down. This is cobra. Exhale, lower back down, press back to tabletop, tuck the toes, and downward dog. Okay, from down dog, we inhale, fill the lungs, exhale, front edge of the mat. Inhale up to the standing back bend. Let's grab the right wrist with the left hand and exhale as we stretch our side. Hips right, arm left. Inhale, center, and exhale, other side. Inhale back to center and exhale to forward fold. Inhale to half lift, and again, exhale, step to the top of a push-up. So push-ups are difficult. Rather than skipping them or doing push-ups that look like that, where you only bend the arms slightly, which doesn't really do much, much better drop the knees each time and make those arms bend. This is what strengthens your arms, is this bend in the arms. It's not this little thing or... Uh, cheating it in some way and upper body strength is important both for men and women okay for our health ultimately so it's not about impressing anybody or looking hot or anything like that okay so knees up or down down is about 30 percent easier take a deep breath exhale halfway down inhale straighten arms and legs it's called an up dog so I don't know if you can see, my knees are off the ground, my legs are active, arms are straight, I'm in a back bend. And if that's too much, you just repeat the cobra, which we already learned. As we exhale, we pull the feet in the same time as the hips lift up and back. Doing both feet simultaneously helps us avoid uh, SI joint issues down the road. Good, let's do another. We inhale to the toes, fill the lungs, exhale, front edge of the mat. Inhale to standing back bend, exhale to half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Inhale, center, exhale, other side. Inhale, center, and exhale, sit back into an imaginary seat, chair pose, Utkatasana. So try and get those knees back over the heels and then try and sit into your imaginary seat. Another name for this is awkward pose. So you could say if it doesn't feel awkward, you're probably not doing it right. It's, it's not the most comfortable or easy position to maintain. Good, let's inhale, 
standing back bend and exhale forward fold inhale half lift and if you're able exhale to the bottom of a push-up inhale to up dog or you could do cobra and exhale do a push-up on your way out again push-ups really really valuable form of exercise um, most people don't like them but yoga is a lot like medicine the question really isn't so much like what do i like uh, it's really what is good for me and push-ups are very good for you so i recommend don't skip them if you can avoid it okay so feet touch let's inhale right leg up and back and exhale the knee toward your belly out to the right and back behind so as big as you can go notice my knee is bent okay the whole time big circles in each direction good and then as we exhale let's lunge keep that back heel raised and we'll inhale up into crescent lunge ashta chandrasana okay so front foot and knee point straight ahead notice the knee is over the heel so i'm not back here i'm also not out here like this okay just directly over the knee that right thigh is approaching parallel with the ground upper body is up and back i can look up there is a sort of back bend element to this this is like part back bend and part lunge left hip forward right hip back that right heel is pressing toward the ground so i'm not lifting the heel up that's not it it's pressing back arms are straight up and back good exhale bottom of the push-up and make your way to down dog that is ashta chandrasana or crescent lunge good feet touch we inhale left leg up and back exhale oh sorry exhale the knee toward your belly to the left back behind big circles and make sure to do a few in each direction Take a deep breath, exhale, lunge, inhale to crescent, lunge, ashta, chandrasana. Good, take a deep breath, exhale, bottom of the push-up. Okay, as you hold that posture, make sure you feel that front thigh work and the front of the back leg stretching, okay? Okay, today we're focusing on back bends. So let's exhale down onto the belly and we'll do our first very simple back bend. The arms extend out in front of us, okay? And then with the next inhale, let's lift the right leg and arm as high as we can lift them this is called Arda Shalabhasana so you can get the whole thigh off the ground the hip will stay down good exhale come on down and inhale the left arm and left leg keep that leg straight lifted as high as you can but keep your left hip on the ground good exhale come on down relax and then from there you can press back or vinyasa back to the downward dog. You'll notice I do skip push-ups. That's because I've learned over time that if I do all of them when I'm teaching like this, I just run out of breath. So 
I'm speaking, I'm not doing the yogic breathing. So you should not be speaking. <laughs> you should be simply breathing very deeply. So hopefully you can do all the push-ups. Okay, from here, let's inhale to our toes. We exhale to the front edge of the mat. Let's inhale up to standing back bend. As we exhale, we'll bend the knees and open up the upper body to the right. So hips are facing forward, but the chest is facing the right wall. I look back over my right thumb. Okay, so this is a chair twist combination of the chair pose or awkward pose and a spinal twist. Let's inhale back to standing. We'll exhale to the other side, same thing. Left hip forward, left shoulder back. Good, inhale, standing back bend, exhale forward fold. Inhale, half lift, exhale, bottom of the push-up. Making your way to down dog, okay? Okay, let's bring our feet to touch here. We inhale the right leg up and back. And as we exhale, let's just tap the knee high up on our arm. Inhale that leg up and back. Exhale. Touch your nose, your chin, or your forehead. Inhale up and back. Exhale to the opposite arm. Inhale the leg up and back. Exhale as you lunge. And inhale to crescent lunge. Good. Exhale, bend the arms. So you really sink into that crescent. Then inhale up to this position, which is stupa. And then we'll exhale, whoops, sorry, we exhale to crescent lunge facing back, okay? Good, so we're gonna do that a few times. Stupa is like neutral. And then exhale, crescent lunge facing front. So you have to pivot on the balls and heels of your feet. Each time you do crescent, make sure you're feeling the posture, okay? So you really sink into it, feel the muscles working and stretching. Good. This time we exhale the crescent, and then let's inhale and exhale to a warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, okay? So this is different than crescent. The back heel is on the ground. Front leg pretty much the same as crescent. You notice the pelvis and the chest are now opening up to the left wall there. The arms, instead of being overhead, are now parallel with the ground. And again, in this posture, when I teach live, I see a lot of this. It's not, there's no leaning. Okay, shoulders are back over the hips directly. Good. Take a deep breath. Exhale, cartwheel down bottom of the push-up and make your way to down dog. Okay, feet touch. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, the knee high up on the left arm. Just tap. Inhale. Exhale to the center. Tap. Inhale, exhale, opposite arm as high as you can. Good, inhale, exhale, lunge. Inhale, crescent lunge. Good, exhale, we're just gonna bend those arms. And then we inhale to stupa, and we exhale, facing back. Good, so simple flow, basically two postures. We're just gonna go through it a few times. Each time we want to feel those legs work and stretch, okay? So make sure you feel it. It's the most important thing. What do we feel, not how do we look? What am I feeling? I want to feel the work. Good. So let's inhale, stupa, and then exhale to warrior two. Hold your warrior two. Again, what do you feel here? How does this feel different? than the crescent lunge. 
Can you feel the work? So this sounds strange, but we want to kind of first make ourselves a little uncomfortable and then learn to be comfortable with the discomfort. I hope that makes sense. So it's not about doing it really easy, like being comfortable and then, okay, I'm comfortable here. That's not it. I, I want to come into a position where I'm working a bit and then I learn to relax into that experience and that work. Good. Let's exhale, cartwheel down, bottom of the push-up. Make your way to down dog. From here, we'll take a deep breath and exhale onto the belly. Okay, so come on down. Excellent. Okay. So now we're going to look at the half frog, Ardha Bekasana. So bending the knee. Okay, I prop myself up on my elbows. And then again, if I cannot hold the foot with my hand, I'll use a strap. Take the left hand, bring it across the front edge of your mat. Okay, so it's parallel. The forearm is parallel with the front edge of the mat. Elbows under the shoulder. And then reach back, grab this foot. Okay, now if that creates a lot of pain in your knee, again, you're going to have to ease up. But if you have uh, open enough quads, you can apply pressure downward. Notice my elbow is pointing up, and I'll grab my toes with my fingers and apply that pressure downward, and this is called the half frog. Very good preparation for deeper backbend work. Okay, so you can hang out here. If you wanna go a step further, take the left hand and straighten it out. So now it's a deeper backbend, hip flexor, quad stretch. So opening up those areas. Good, exhale, come on down. And we will switch sides. This is called the half frog. And you probably will feel it in your back. Again, that needs to be within the range of what you determine is safe for your back. Okay, so if you're unsure, be more gentle with your body. Use the breath to coax relaxation in the body, to tell the nervous system to relax with the sensations. Good, exhale, come on down and then take a vinyasa or go straight back to the downward dog. From down dog, inhale to your toes, exhale to the front edge of your mat. We inhale up to standing, exhale to the chair twist. Inhale back up, exhale chair twist. Good, inhale back up, and exhale to a prayer twist. Okay, so you twist over to the side, to your right. Okay, I'm mirroring you at this point. So hips down, spine long, right shoulder back, gaze up. I don't know if you can hear my back cracking, but I'm getting a nice twist out of this. Okay, and if you'd like to take this a step further, inhale, open the arms. Exhale, hands shoulder width, gaze forward, and gradually shift weight from the feet to the arms, side crow, Parsva Bekasana. Again, great way to strengthen the upper body. And again, no matter what you've been told, we all need upper body strength, okay? And all you're doing is supporting your own body weight. So we're not doing crazy uh, deadlifts or anything like that. We're just supporting our own body weight. It's not a bad thing to be able to do, okay? To be able to support our own body. Let's do the other side. So we inhale up and we exhale, take a twist to the other side, left side this time, hips down, spine long, 
Again, you might hear some cracking in your back. To take it a step further, inhale, arms up, and then exhale, Parsva Bekasana, side crow. Good. Let's inhale back to standing back bend and exhale forward fold. Inhale, half lift and exhale bottom of the push up as we make our way to down dog. All right, good work everybody. Let's go ahead and bring our feet to touch here. We'll inhale the right leg up and back to what we call a three-legged dog pose. So the leg is straight and lifted as high as I can lift it without also lifting the hip. So that would look like that. Notice how much higher my leg goes. But I'm lifting my hip. So in a very real sense, I'm cheating, okay? So we're gonna keep those hips squared off and we'll lift that leg as high as we can with the hips squared, keeping the leg straight, toes, knee, and hip pointing down. Good, let's exhale, lunge. And then we inhale to crescent lunge. We exhale, bend those arms. Inhale, straighten the arms and the leg and exhale to a warrior two. Good, inhale to stupa. Exhale to a warrior two facing the opposite direction. Inhale, straighten the arms and legs. Exhale to crescent lunge with the arms bent. Good, we're just gonna flow through that again. Warrior two, stupa. Warrior two, stupa, crescent. Let's do it again. Inhale, exhale, warrior two. Inhale, stupa. Exhale, warrior two, facing opposite direction. Inhale, stupa. Exhale, crescent. Good. Inhaling back up. Warrior two. And then this time, inhale, stupa. And exhale to goddess. Okay, so in goddess, the toes and knees point in the same direction. The knees are back, so they're as close to over the heels as I can manage. All right, again, my thighs are approaching parallel. I'm feeling those legs working. And then my arms are basically mimicking what I'm doing with the legs there. All right, inhale back up and exhale, cartwheel down, bottom of the push-up. Let's bring our feet to touch. We'll inhale that left leg up and back to three-legged dog pose. Let's take a nice deep breath. Exhale as we lunge, and we would inhale to crescent lunge. Exhale, bend those arms. Inhale, straighten the arms and legs. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, stupa. Exhale, warrior two, facing back. Inhale, straighten the arms and leg. Exhale, and crescent. Good, just going through that same flow of postures. Crescent, warrior, warrior, crescent, warrior, and then inhale stupa and exhale to utkata konasana, okay, the fierce angle pose and it it feels fierce so again if you're not feeling the fierceness then you might not have found your edge the active yoga that we're doing today it the yin is more about 
relaxation and stretching. This type of yoga has a kind of a fire to it. That can be called Agni or Tapas. So there is a, I'm sweating like crazy here. There's a purification that goes on when we create that fire inside. That's what we're looking for. Good, inhale up, exhale, cartwheel down, bottom of the push up, making your way to down dog. All right, from there, let's go ahead and come exhale onto our belly. Let's do another back bend here, okay? So we've done the half frog. Let's see if we can do the full frog here. So come on down, bend both knees, okay? Reach back and try and hold the feet, okay? Now, if you can't hold the feet without hurting your knees, just repeat the first back bend, Shalabhasana. You can do a full Shalabhasana here instead of the half, okay? Now, if you can, turn your fingers around so you are grabbing your toes. Press down with the hands. Notice my elbows are bent. I'm pressing my feet down, not kicking back. And I lift my head, neck, and chest. Good, exhale, come on down and relax. So you've been hearing me talk about hormetic stress. That is a perfect example of hormetic stress. So when I was doing that, didn't feel good. It wasn't easy, it wasn't comfortable. I was out of my comfort zone. Was I actually hurting myself in any way? No, okay? It just didn't feel very easy or very good. <laughs> And that's exactly what we want, okay? Okay, let's press back. And we'll make our way to Downward Facing Dog. Okay, from our Down Dog, let's inhale to the toes. We're gonna exhale, step, jump, or float, front edge of the mat. Good. Let's inhale back up to standing. Exhale, twist, one direction. Inhale back up. Exhale, twist the other direction. Inhale back up. Exhale, take a deeper twist. Hips down, shoulder back, breathe. Good, and inhale all the way back up. And exhale, other direction. Deep twist, breathe. Good. Let's inhale back to standing back bend. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, bottom of the push up, making your way to down dog. Okay, so we've been opening up the hips and the back or backbend work. So here's one that we can do, an asymmetrical backbend. Feet touch, inhale right leg up and back. Bend the knee, open the hip, and if it feels okay, flip your dog over. And it is a backbend, so lift those hips up, arch the spine. You can reach back, creating a big arch. I'm not particularly bendy in my back, so mine's not very pretty, but you get the idea, hopefully. Good, let's exhale the hand to the ground. We lunge and we inhale up to crescent. Exhale, bend the arms. Inhale, straighten the arms and the leg. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale to stupa. Exhale to goddess. Good, inhale back up. Exhale, warrior two facing front. Inhale and exhale, crescent. Good. Same thing. Just with the breath.
Good. Now from here, inhale, draw those arms up, framing the ears. And I'm going to step back because the wall's in front of me. Exhale, kick off the back leg into Warrior 3, Vidabhadrasana 3. Okay, so left leg is like three-legged dog. The foot is flexed, the toes, knee, and hip point down. The arms, torso, and left leg are parallel with the ground. The arms frame the ears. Sending energy out through fingertips and that left heel. Good, deep breath, exhale, bottom of the push-up as you make your way to down dog. And side two, feet touch, inhale, left leg. You could stop here, three-legged dog, but you can also open the hip and again, potentially flip your dog over. <clears throat> Good, take a deep breath, exhale, lunge, and inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, bend those arms. Inhale to a half stupa. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, stupa. Exhale, goddess. Inhale up. Exhale, warrior two facing back. Inhale up. Exhale, crescent. Good, with the breath. Good, exhale to crescent. Inhale the arms up and exhale warrior three. Again, if you're in a small space like me, you may need to step back so you have room for your arms. Now, as you hold this position, what do you notice comes up for you? What sorts of physical sensations, emotions, and thoughts arise? Good, deep breath, exhale, bottom of the push-up, and make your way to downward dog. All right, so this is one of our peak postures next. Let's inhale to the toes, we're gonna exhale front edge of the mat. Let's inhale up to standing back bend. We exhale, hands by our side. Now this is called a standing frog, standing half frog. So we did half frog earlier, okay? And we're gonna do the standing half frog here and recreate that essentially balancing. So we're adding challenge. So if you already found it difficult uh, uh, sitting down, laying down, then maybe you just repeat the warrior three here like that, okay? Otherwise, what we do is we bend the right knee and same as we did before, I'm not kicking back. That's called a dancer pose or a standing bow. It's not what we're doing here. I'm applying pressure forward, okay? So my heel is coming toward or alongside my buttocks on the right side. So notice my leg is uh, completely flexed here. My knee is flexed, okay? Again, I'm gonna grab the four small toes with my fingers if possible. Okay, and this is a start position. Notice my elbow, it's pointing back. I inhale the free arm up, and then I exhale, I basically try and bring myself back into the same back bend, half frog, but just standing on one leg now. Good, inhale, come on up. <sighs> exhale, release the pose, okay? Now, I'm feeling a lot there. I feel lightheaded, all kinds of energy moving. So again, not the most pleasant sensation, 
uh, for me. But again, that's creating all kinds of um, changes, physiological changes in my body that benefit me. Side two, bend the left knee. Same thing, no pain in the knee, okay? I promise you, I do not feel any pain in my knee whatsoever or my ankle, okay? Inhale the free arm up, exhale hinge. It is a back bend, so you're looking up. The back is bending. Again, I don't have a very impressive back bend, so it may not look like much, but this is as much as I can do. Good, inhale, come on up, and exhale, release. Again, I feel a wave of energy and intensity when I release that. Very intense, and it feels almost like I'm gonna faint or something like that. Okay, so a lot of energy was shifted. Blood and lymph and different things were being constricted, muscles were working, all kinds of things were happening. That's why I feel that. And again, that is the feeling of, say, a hormetic stress on my body, a good stress, the kind of stress I want. Because again, is that gonna kill me? Am I gonna die? Am I gonna be unhealthy? No, just the opposite. So even though doing it was not pleasant or easy, coming out of it, I feel this intensity. That's exactly what we're looking for, okay? It's not just in yoga. You can find it out in life, different kinds of exercise. But I'm trying to educate you. This is, we're not looking for everything to be easy, okay? All right, very good. From there, let's go ahead and we'll come on to our back, I think. Let's just come on back, we'll relax for a moment. Again, We've really opened up the body for some deep backbend work. So let's explore that with one last deep backbend. We'll start with something relatively accessible and then we'll move potentially into something that's more challenging. Now again, I'll reiterate, I just don't have the skeleton for deep backbends. So you're never going to see a backbend me do a backbend and you're going to go, oh my God, that's so pretty or that's so impressive or anything like that. Please keep that in mind. Okay. So that has nothing to do with how hard I'm working or how long I've been practicing or how good my yoga is. That's just my skeleton. Okay. So even though it may not look great, you may be able to do much better. Okay. If you have the skeleton for it. Okay, so we're gonna start with the bridge. Knees bend, feet about hip distance, knees hip distance, okay? And then from there, what we'd like to do is you can plant your elbows like this if you want, and then you just lift your hips. This is fine. So we're really lifting the hips up, squeezing those glutes, okay? Some people like to interlace the fingers here and shrug their shoulders under. That helps keep pressure off of your neck, which is a good idea. Okay, then you can hang out here. This is a perfectly good back bend for many people, including myself. I don't really need to go any further. I will to demonstrate, but um, if it were just me and my practice, I probably wouldn't take it any further, okay? So next step, if you're going further, hands release alongside the head, okay? Fingers and toes both point toward the bottom of the mat, arms, Shoulder width or maybe a little bit wider might be easier. Plant them by your head. And then pressing into the hands and the feet, press up into a full bow pose. Good, exhale and come on down. Let your knees drop in. Relax. Now, if you could see, you probably weren't watching me, I hope not, but if you were to watch the replay of this, you would have seen my knees were bent, my arms were bent. If you teach yoga like I do, you will see people, usually girls, who do that pose with their arms and their legs straight, okay? 
It's funny because my pose is much less impressive, but I actually have to work much harder. If your arms and legs are bent, your muscles are working. If you can straighten your arms and your legs, you can lock out the joints. It's much, much easier. But it requires more flexibility in the shoulders, hips, and back, which I don't have. So if I do that posture, I have to make up for that flexibility with my strength. Okay, let's go ahead and join the soles of the feet together. We'll drop our knees out to the sides. And then let's straighten the left leg as we bring our right leg in, give it a little squeeze. And then place that foot on the opposite thigh, extend the arms to the side and take your left hand and guide the knee down to the left as you look to your right. Good, inhale, extend that leg straight up and exhale, lower it down to meet the other leg. Let's bring the left leg in. Again, just move it around a bit right now. Just feel the hip, feel the back, the leg. Good, and then place it on the opposite thigh. Use your right hand guide it down to the right, look to your left. Good. Inhale, extend that leg up and exhale, lower that leg to meet the other. Let's bring both legs in. So again, you can make some circles. Feels really good in my body right now. Circles, a few in each direction. You can also do things like rocking the length of your spine. All right, that might feel good. Or some people like rocking side to side or you can do all of the above okay so really this is sort of a free form what your body is craving moment and then grabbing the soles of the feet that's called happy baby so if you look at me i have my knees deeply bent and i'm really pulling on my feet so that creates a nice release in my back after those back bends so i like the way that that feels okay and then from there i can straighten out the legs pull them apart, pull them overhead, again, stretch my back a little more. <laughs> Take your time when you're done, unwind onto your back in Shavasana, corpse pose. Heels apart, palms up, head centered, chin tucked in slightly, eyes closed. And as usual, my recommendation, set a timer for six minutes, which is 10%, that's where that number comes from. Our class is 60 minutes. So 10% of that is six minutes, five, six minutes, five minutes is fine. And then see if you can just not move your body for that next six minutes. Let the breathing be natural, the face relax, let gravity take over. <laughs> 